Uh. As Coach Boyle sits down, this was his 150th home win tonight, folks. 115 and 28. And Tad, in case you don't know, Oregon beat Stanford, so Colorado is clinched no worse than a fourth place uh, standing in the standings. Thank you. Uh, Coach, if you want to start with this, your opening thoughts, and then we'll uh, yeah. go to questions. Uh, team victory. Uh, guys were, uh, McKinley said it, our guys were dialed into the scouting report, both uh, defensively and, and, and when we share the ball and have 20 assists on offense, uh, we're, we're a joy to watch and a joy to coach and uh, guys are a joy to play with. So, um, you know, we had been shooting the ball from three kind of, it, it's been tough for us the last three games. So I knew it was just a matter of time if we're getting good shots and taking good shots that they'd start falling. I see us in practice. I see how guys shoot the ball and it translated a game tonight and we really shared it. Um, I thought we had some really good uh, individual efforts, even though it was a team victory. Eli Parquet's defensive uh, job on Tajidi, Dallas and Evan kind of uh, tag team and Evan Mobley. Those two guys are really, really good players. And our guys did a good job of understanding the game plan and, and making everything tough for them. And then obviously Jiraiya made some big shots and threes. Maddox, I thought, hit a big three in the second half. Eli Parquet makes timely ones. So, and then, you know, your point guard has 14 assists and 15 points. Um, you know, things are. I was told Mark Johnson in the radio he's only he only had four rebounds, so I might have to bench him. But um, great, great victory. Okay, we'll uh, throw it to Jake Shapiro. Dad, is there is there someone you would take before Jariah Horn to play horse? <laughs> when Jariah gets it going, man, he's he is uh, he's a rhythm shooter. He knows how to get his shots off. He's got a quick release. I mean, they knew. He's a three-point shooter. Look, the scatter report's out on Jiraiya. You know, people are switching his ball screens, but he was able to – he's just a crafty player, and uh, he gets himself going. And, you know, Jiraiya's got the ability to, to, to make tough shots. He's made some tough ones. And my biggest thing with him is I just want you to take wide open threes. You know, there was, I think, just under eight minutes to go in the game. He's wide open on the press in the corner, and he let it go. And – you know, normally you're like, oh, that's a quick shot. We don't need that one. But, you know, with Jariah, you know, you kind of take the good with the bad sometimes. And, and uh, uh, But he was he was feeling it tonight and his efficiency uh, in, the, in terms of the, the number of minutes he played and, and, and the numbers he put up were, were pretty impressive. And the thing about Jariah, he's a really good uh, – he's really rebounding the ball well for us, which, which we need. So, because I thought, you know, the, the rebounding battle tonight against USC was going to be the key. And we only – you know we're plus one, but you know sometimes you have to battle those long, those long athletes, and it's uh, doesn't always go your way. Uh, Pat Rooney. Hey Ted, what's it mean uh, for this team to have Jabari Walker back in the mix uh, down the stretch? And is it a situational? Uh, you know, I know you have good front court depth right now, but do you, do you have to watch his minutes at all, or is he good to go? Yeah, kind of. we're, you know, it's all based on his foot and, and how he's feeling. And we've, we've told Jabari, you know, you've got to be honest with us as coaches and, and the trainer, uh, Raleigh Klingsmith, you know, how your foot's feeling. Um, because if there is pain there, we've got to kind of limit and back off a little bit. So it's great to have him back. Uh, you know, he, he was a big part of this team when he went down, and he's still a big part of it. So we were able to weather some foul trouble tonight. You know, Evan – uh, Batty got in some foul trouble tonight, and Jari, uh, Jabari himself got in some foul trouble. And so Tristan, you know, we're able to throw him in there at the, uh, as a front court player. In the first half, he played basically perimeter minutes. And so to have a guy like Tristan De Silva, who's so versatile uh, that you can plug into different spots based on what's going on, it's really a luxury. So, you know, we're 10 deep now, and uh, it's great to have Jabari back. Uh, we'll go over to Mark Kisler. Hey, Coach. Uh, congrats on the win. Uh, Two-parter. Uh, I know that a coach seldom likes to see that technical after the ball goes in the basket, but to what extent was the passion of this team important in this game? And then the second question is, um, on your best nights, you're as good as any team in the conference and one of the better teams in the country. And on your not-so-good nights, you're kind of a mystery. Have you figured – has this team figured it out yet? Those are the two questions. Well, the first one, 
Mark, uh, yeah, basketball is an emotional game. We've got emotional players. Our guys were ready to play tonight. Um, look, in our my 11 years here, we we have not gotten a lot of technicals, woofing at the other team or talking trash. Um, you know, McKinley might have said something, um, again, as a reaction to maybe something that was said to him a little earlier. He's got to be better about that and, and, and keep his emotions in check. Um, the other ones, I, I just like, I just shake my head like whatever. <laughs> you know, so like it's – uh, yeah, it's an emotional game, and, and McKinley, you heard him say it. He's got to do a better job of keeping those in check, and, and uh, you know, he definitely said something. So, you know, you take that one. The other ones, I'm like, ooh, I'm scratching my head. So, um, it's if, if it were a uh, issue with this team and it was something that happened, you know, year in and year out, game in and game out, then, yeah, it's something we got to address. But aberration tonight. Um, the second part. Mark, yeah, we you're, you're right. We we can you know we've had some bad losses. There's no there's no getting around that. Um, you know, and I think when we're locked in defensively, you know, I look at the Washington loss and the Utah loss at home, and and if we lock in defensively the way we have here the last four or five games, even Oregon, the game we lost uh, on the road, it, it wasn't because we weren't locked in defensively. So when we play at a high level on the defensive end and rebounding the ball. We can beat anybody, and that's that's why we beat USC tonight. And it just so happened our shots were going in. We had 20 assists. We shared the ball, and, and those nights, you know, it's going to be a runaway. But uh, you got to figure out a way to win games when you're not shooting your best. And uh, we have stubbed our toe a couple of times when it comes to that. And uh, um, so sometimes offense comes and offense goes. Shots go in some nights. They don't go in other nights. And um, – yeah, it's hard after a, a win like this to, to, to look at those three games, Cal, Washington, and Utah, and, and say, dang, you know, we'd be, we'd be right in the thick of uh, a Pac-12 championship race, but we're not, you know. But we're, we're going to get a bye in the first round of the Pac-12 tournament, and we'll see, uh, see what happens there. But, we, you know, look, we've got to turn around and, and, uh, and play a good UCLA team who's had our number here the last three times we've played them. And uh, we got to figure some things out uh, for the Bruins and uh, short turnaround for us, short turnaround for them. So here we go. Uh, Pat Graham. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Uh, kids kind of stole my question, but that's okay, kids. I'll, I'll forgive you for that one. Um, I guess when you look at the stat sheet, what, what sticks out the most? Is the 20 assists? Is it maybe holding the Mobley brothers to, what, uh, 15 points? Or what, what kind of – as a coach, what, when you look at that thing, what sticks out? Two things. Defensive field goal percentage, you know, holding that USC team. And it's not just the Mobleys. I mean, it's Taj Edey, who's playing at a high, high level and shooting the ball extremely well. And, uh, but holding their, their best players kind of in check and holding them at 39, 38%. Uh, so that's number one. And then the 20 assists. When you're sharing the ball and moving the ball, and, again, your point guard has 14 of them. Um, you can't get an assist if the ball doesn't go in the basket. And, you know, sometimes we look at our assist numbers and they're like, oh, we didn't, you know, we didn't hit them well. It's hard to get assists when shots don't go in. So, uh, but, yeah, uh, 20 assists, field goal percentage defense, the two things that stick out to me. Uh, Justin Greer. Ted, uh, right after McKinley got teed up, he had a couple nice back-to-back -back, uh, fast break layups. Um you guys had 17 points tonight off of their turnovers. Uh, just curious of what you thought of the tempo tonight and just uh, how transitional you guys were, were doing uh, on the offense. Yeah, we wanted to make this a track meet, Justin. We wanted to run after Mick, uh, makes, run after misses. Um, you know, that technical fired McKinley up because, he, you know, again, the emotions were running high with our team tonight. And we played with it. We played with great energy. And, and emotion. We got to keep him in check a little bit more. But but that technical kind of fueled McKinley and he got a couple buckets in transition after that because his you know the 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 uh, the blood was flowing through the veins, man. He and, and when he gets like that and he's aggressive, he's a really good finisher in transition and I thought the pace of the play in the first half was really how we wanted it and at times in the second half it was, but um, you know, we started using clock when we got that lead, and I think our, our guys did a good job of that. We, it's, it's, it's a balance between not being too tentative, still being aggressive on offense, but taking great shots and being smart. And I thought our guys did a good job of that down the stretch. Okay, Coach, we're going to open it to the classes in the room. We'll take one question from the class uh, if we have any. Uh, 
Uh, we'll go to Truman uh, Arnella. Hey, coach, congrats on the win. Um, another good night from the free throw line tonight. Uh, I, if I believe correctly, you guys are still on pace to break the record. If not, you're still number one in the country. How do you keep your guys motivated and locked in from the free throw line? Uh, very simple. We don't talk about it. Yeah, we don't. We don't. We don't talk about it. We just play the game. You go to the line. You step up. You you knock them down. And <laughs> not a lot of secrets, you know, other than the fact that the head coach took over free throw shooting responsibilities for the team this year, rather than giving it to the assistants like I've done in the past. So, just kidding, guys. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks, coach.